Sexual reproduction involves two parents, each contributing half of the genetic material to their offspring. It requires the fusion of egg and sperm to form a zygote, which develops into a new individual. Contrary to what you might think, sexual reproduction does not necessarily involve the act of sex. Plants conduct sexual reproduction, but let me assure you that you'll never walk into your backyard and be embarrassed by what your daisies are doing. In order to conduct sexual reproduction, plants must produce egg and sperm cells, or gametes. Some plants, like this ginkgo tree, have male and female genders in separate plants, while others possess both male and female sex organs in the same plant. In either case, the male gamete is often encased in pollen grains and is usually transported to the female gamete by wind, water, or by animal pollinators. Bryophytes are a group of seedless, non-vascular plants that includes mosses and their relatives. In bryophytes, the male and female gametes are produced by the haploid gametophyte generation. Sperm are produced by the male gametophyte. They swim to the egg found in the female gametophyte. When egg and sperm fuse during fertilization, the resulting zygote grows into the diploid sporophyte generation. The sporophyte generation produces spores by meiosis, and those spores can germinate and grow into a new gametophyte generation. This cycle alternating between gametophyte generation and sporophyte generation is called alternation of generations. Alternation of generations is also part of sexual reproduction in pteridophytes like ferns. Pteridophytes are seedless, just like bryophytes, but they have vascular tissue like xylem and phloem that bryophytes don't have. The main part of the fern plant is the diploid sporophyte generation. If you take a peek at the underside of a fern leaf, you might see the tiny haploid spores produced by meiosis. These spores are transported by wind to new soil where they can germinate and grow into a new gametophyte generation. The gametophyte generation produces male and female gametes that fuse during fertilization and grow into a new diploid sporophyte generation. This cycle continues over and over again, perpetuating fern populations through sexual reproduction. Cone-bearing plants are called gymnosperms. A mature pine tree is the sporophyte generation. The male gametophyte generation is produced within the male cones. Male cones produce pollen, which contains the male gametes. Pollen travels on the wind to the female gamete found inside the female cones. When sperm and egg fuse during fertilization, the resulting zygote grows into a tiny plant embryo. That embryo is kept safe inside a seed, and the seeds are protected by the cone until it's time for them to be released and grow into new trees. Not all plants produce flowers, but those that do are called angiosperms. Flowers are the reproductive organs of angiosperms, and not all of them are pretty like those you see here. Some might not even look like flowers at all. Regardless of what they look like, flowers are made up of many parts that each have a function in reproduction. The stem of the flower is called the pedicel. It supports the flower on the plant. The receptacle is the enlarged end of the pedicel from which the flower emerges. Small leaves called sepals protect the flower before it opens. The ring of sepals is called the calyx. Inside the sepals are the colorful petals that serve to attract pollinators to the flower. The ring of petals is called the corolla. The male part of the flower is called the stamen. The stamen is made up of two parts. The first part is the filament, which is a stalk that supports the second part, the anther. The anther is where pollen is produced. Pollen grains contain two cells, a tube cell and a generative cell which will divide to produce two sperm. The innermost structure of a flower is the female part known as the pistil. The pistil is made up of three parts. At the top is the stigma, which is sticky to help capture pollen grains. 
The style is a tube that connects the stigma to the last part, the ovary. The ovary contains the ovules, which are unfertilized seeds. The ovules contain the female gamete, or egg, that when fertilized, grows to become a tiny plant embryo. Sexual reproduction in angiosperms involves two fertilization events known as double fertilization. Each pollen grain produced by the anther contains a tube cell and a generative cell that divides to form two sperm. When a pollen grain lands on the sticky stigma of a flower, it germinates. The tube nucleus burrows down through the style, creating the pollen tube. The two sperm, produced by the generative nucleus, follow behind. The pollen tube grows down through the style and into the ovary to an ovule, which is magnified here. The pollen tube enters the ovule through a small opening called the micropyle. The two sperm produced by the generative nucleus are then able to enter the ovule for two fertilization events. One sperm fuses with the egg and will develop into a tiny plant embryo. The second sperm fertilizes the polar nuclei in the center of the ovule. This union gives rise to the endosperm, the substance surrounding the embryo that will nourish it as the embryo grows. You have now seen the two sperm and the two fertilization events that give double fertilization its name. After double fertilization, the ovule becomes a seed. The ovary surrounding the ovules ripens to become a fruit. In botany, the study of plants, a fruit is defined as a ripened plant ovary. In the culinary world, any edible plant part that is sweet is called a fruit. The difference between the botanical term and the culinary term can lead to some confusion when trying to classify produce as fruits or vegetables. Scientifically speaking, any produce item that contains seeds is a ripened ovary and is therefore a fruit, so the scientific term is a little more inclusive. Many produce that are traditionally thought of as vegetables are actually classified as fruit according to the field of botany. For example, peppers, including bell peppers, jalapenos, poblanos, habaneros, are all fruit. Cucumbers are fruit. All kinds of squash, including pumpkins, are fruit, and tomatoes are fruit as well. All of these were at one time a plant ovary within a flower, so botanically they are classified as fruit. The word vegetable is not a scientific word, but rather a culinary one that refers to any edible part of a plant that is savory instead of sweet. This is where people get confused since there is an overlap between the scientific definition of a fruit and the culinary term vegetable. For the purposes of this class, you should use the scientific meaning of the word fruit and not the culinary one. The word vegetable is not used in botany at all. Instead, botanists refer to other produce as the plant parts that they are. For example, leaves, roots, or stems.